Hey guys, it's Lisa here coming to you with an impromptu um, upload. So, um, in front of me is a little haul that I received in the post yesterday. There is one thing missing which I believe is, is going to come today, but um, I have decided to, to give Diamond Painting a bit of a try. Uh, I've been a member of the, the Diamond Painting Group on Facebook, the, the Heaven and Earth Diamond Painting Group, um, for that matter, for, God, well over a year now. And sort of always looked at them and, and thought, well, I, I don't know, I'm always just a bit sceptical that the beads, diamonds or drills, as they're sometimes called, would, would actually fall off the canvas. So... Uh, I've been following Stitcherista, I think all of us do, from a floss tube perspective and, and obviously she's well and truly fallen down the diamond painting <laughs> rabbit hole. So so really for me, I just I just wanted to have a go. So I've ordered one online um, just to see whether or not I like it, whether it's something I could stick with before I sort of go a little bit deeper into the hobby. So I'm just going to show you some of the supplies that I've bought initially, which from watching Stitcherista from watching numerous other diamond painting, I don't know what you call them, they're not floss tubers either, but diamond painting hobbyists uploading onto onto YouTube. Um, I, I've kind of got a bit of a gist of what's really critical for like maybe your first project. So I'm going to share that with you now and um, yeah, and yeah, we'll have a look and see what you, what you all think. So obviously the the painting itself generally from what I can gather tend to ship in these boxes or they'll often come in like um, a cardboard tube or something along the lines but you've got the picture on the end of the design that you're doing and obviously I'll put a picture in so you can see a bit more closely what that will look like when it's finished allegedly and um, so I'll open up I'll open up the box and within this, essentially, you have everything that you need in order to do um, a diamond painting project. So, obviously, you've got the canvas, which I don't know what I expected these to feel like, really. Um, but, you know, they feel, they feel quite nice. Um, obviously, this one's a little bit creased. There are numerous tips out there which show what you can do in order to get the creases out and make it lie flatter. Um, one lady I saw, it's just a case of simply peeling back the corners. So far, they're quite sticky as well, to be fair, and then it should start to lay a little bit faster, but obviously I'll do that offline. Um, this canvas, well the, the protector hasn't been cut so there are some uploads that show you how to cut the plastic so you can just reveal um, parts of the the canvas that you're working on at the time so you don't lose the stickiness. Oh here's Daisy. Daisy is currently chasing flies around the house so she's a really good insect fly catcher. So that is the canvas and then you receive um, obviously all of the drills um, in the bags so I've got all of the, the shades that I need in order to complete the design yeah they've got the numbers printed so they've actually numbered them already in terms of one two and through two I don't know how many colors there are in this let's have a look oh I don't know they're probably about 18 maybe possibly um, different shades in there and obviously with their DMC numbers as well I recognise 169 being a grey there so yeah they are square square diamonds which I wanted I didn't I didn't know what the round ones would look like I don't know I just wanted the, the square ones and then you also get um, a little uh, tray a pen to, to pick things up, well pick the drills up with some wax in there and a set of tweezers. So that's what essentially I got in the kit. I also ordered the light box or the light mat. Um, I think just about everybody who uploaded a diamond painting video mentioned about getting one of these is just making life that little bit easier and showing you the the the, the colors a little bit better and I, and I will show you what this looks like when I've finished my setup I do a lot of my sort of cross stitch 
project working on an evening so maybe when the light's not as good so I thought this would probably give me the best advantage in order to make sure that you know I do I do like it I mean this was I got one where you could alter the light settings so it's got three different light settings on it um, it cost me 26 pounds on Amazon but that is primarily because I ordered everything on Prime so you always pay that little bit extra don't you for Prime so you could probably get this a little bit cheaper from other sellers but I'll put all the links below in the in the comments box for everything that I've ordered and then you can you can have a look and see what you think also I got um, some extra like a little extra kit that came with um, one of these storage cases I just wanted somewhere to be able to put the the diamonds. I don't want, you know, I'm going to try and keep this down to a, a minimum. As you know, I do lots of other crafts as well. You know, I make jewellery, I do cards. You know, I've got an extensive collection of <laughs> things. And I, you know, I just, I just don't want to then fall into another hobby where I end up with a whole host of stuff. So, you know, for me, this is about having a practice on something that was relatively inexpensive and then moving on to the heaven and earth design pieces because I've got a lot of heaven and earth design patterns in stash and you know for me it's about maybe being able to work on a few more patterns than I would if I was just cross stitching alone because we know how long cross stitch takes and from what I've seen with the diamond paintings these move on an awful lot quicker so I'm thinking you know I can complete quite a few heaven and earth designs through diamond painting and then stitch the ones that I really really want to stitch because you know I don't know what the longevity of these will be do you know do you know what I mean I have visions of me hanging pieces that I've worked on the wall for a long time and the, and the diamonds dropping off so you know we'll see um but in this kit you know you've got a number of pens with different extensions so you can you know essentially attach multiple diamonds at once with these special ends I don't know if I'll ever be doing that um, apparently it's quite hard to line them up on the trays it comes with about five of these little green trays and then some more wax I've heard um, people who upload say that blue tack rather than the wax might be a better option so I think I'll give the blue track at blue tack a try um, apparently that lasts for forever and a day inside the pen rather than the wax which wears off so you know we'll see and then this little storage box that has a number of these little tiny containers within it and then what I'll do is I'll just number with a sharpie on the top um, the the actual colour oh wow they are secure I can't get in it <laughs> anyway oh try the right end girly so so basically yeah you just put your drills inside um, it should hold quite a few because they are tiny they're so much smaller than I thought they would be so the plan is to to get everything set up I ordered a couple more of these boxes as well. They came in a, in a in a pack together, just so if I do get to the point where I like it enough to work on a heaven and earth design, I've got enough of these little containers for each number of the, the shades I use because normally a standard heaven and earth has about 90 different shades, so I thought that would... Um, well, that would work quite well so I have an idea of how I might set this up um, a few people work off flat tables I don't want to do that for the sake of my neck I do have neck and back problems so obviously as you know I've kind of have different stands and frames that I work with you know I've got my Monstrix I've got my necessaire stand so I've got an idea of how I'm going to work this that doesn't involve working on a flat table but also doesn't involve working on an expensive or buying anything else. Um, so yeah, I will get everything set up and then I'll come back and show you kind of what I've done in terms of setup and organising this for myself. So I'll catch you in a few minutes guys. Well, it won't be a few minutes for me, but it will be for you. I'll speak to you in a bit. Hey guys, so I've managed to get all of the drills transferred to the container now. So there were actually 19 shades in total. So they're actually really quite easy to transfer out. So obviously I've got them all lined up in the little box now. 
So there were all numbered as well, which was, was really useful with this particular kit. Um, the kit came from, um, what's the company called? It's called Small Ones, um, just on Amazon. Do you know what, the, the set out of the kit was actually really, really nice. So I'm just gonna take out one of these bags to show you, for example. So let me just get that into focus for you. So the number 17 is actually on there with the DMC number, which is 939. So obviously then I've put the corresponding diamonds into the, the box with the number 17 on in there. So this has made it really, really easy. They've print, printed two legends or kind of, what do you call them? descriptors of what colours to use, one on either side of the um, the actual pattern itself or the, the canvas which is which is really really nice so all I've done is just number these sort of 1 to 19 obviously there's some empty containers in there which are fine but these will be the numbers that I guess I can always use even when I move on to doing a heaven and earth design if I decide to move that way and then these just pop open and you've got the little diamonds in there, which, I mean, I can't believe how tiny they are. I don't know what it is, <laughs> whether it's a scale thing or what, but all of the videos I've watched, the canvases look big and the actual paintings themselves look pretty big, but yeah, that doesn't seem to be the case. So I've got my setup now complete. I'm quite happy with, with what I've managed to do. So I will, um, I'll go and, and show you what I've actually managed to cobble together, sort of a makeshift table to get going with. So I'll see you in a moment. So I've just pulled this stand to the to the top of the staircase just to show you. I wanted to just move away from the birds. Um, they've been outside for the last few days in the ravery, but they're making a lot of noise today. I've decided to give the neighbours a little bit of respite from them, really. So, yeah, just to give you a bit of an idea of the setup that I've got going. So the eagle-eyed amongst you will have realised that this is actually my necessaire stand. So it's my cross-stitch stand. So I thought I would make use of this. Um, you know, I just wanted to see how I would get going. Obviously, this is a fairly small canvas, so it's 30 by 30, so it's about 12 inches squared. So it's, you know, it'll fit nicely on there. A heaven and earth design probably wouldn't so much, but, you know, this is just about me really trying to find out whether or not I actually like doing this, really, in the first instance. So I've got my light box attached to, basically I've just cut um, some foam board. So I bought that to do some mounting of finished pieces. So obviously that's that and done nothing while my pieces sit in the drawer of shame doing nothing. So yeah, I just thought I'd just cut one of the boards um, it's not quite half, it's just less than half size, just so I can sort of rest it on the on the stand in the same way that I would do with one of my um, quantum stitching frames. So just to, to give you a little bit more of an idea of what's involved. So I have, sorry I'll just move the camera a little bit closer for you as well. So I have quite literally sort of attached the, the actual piece itself onto the onto the light box as you can see there just by a couple of these metal clips um, I already had them in my drawer but you know you can pick them up really quite easily from any stationery shop but I'll just I'll take it off and then you've got a bit more of an idea what's set so I'll just take the clips off if I can doesn't want to come off it's quite a tight squeeze I probably need some bigger clips really um, canvas comes off I, um, I just, and then what I've done is I've just put, let me just check that's in shot for you, just a tiny, tiny run of, um, I don't know whether you'll be able to see the difference there, but just a tiny bit of washi tape down the side because there was a little bit of sort of crossover onto the canvas and, and a few people have commented on like little bits of fluff getting picked up from from your clothing and your hands so it sometimes runs a little, a little bit along the edge it's the only place it has on the on the canvas so the glues just overlap slightly so I've just covered up a little bit of the the legend on the side but as I said there is another legend here that I'll be able to to work off so 
I chose this pattern because it reminded me of the, the rose in, in uh, the Disney animation Beauty and the Beast, you know, where the, the rose is wilting and they're trying to, um, obviously he wants to try and kiss her because obviously he won't become a prince if he doesn't kiss that and the rose is wilting. <laughs> so, I thought it reminded me of that. Now, sorry about the noise. So I've actually stuck the, um, the actual light box onto the foam board with just some stick-on velcro that I had um, in my craft room really because obviously you never know when you might need a bit of velcro so obviously that's coming really really handy and that will just attach back onto there and just sort of sit so so that's kind of where I'm at really so I'm all pretty much set up uh, quite pleased with with that I mean it's nothing you know sort of mind bogglingly amazing but you know it's it's a little bit of a start um and obviously if i do decide i would like to try heaven and earth design having completed this over the next few weeks then i may look at some sort of i don't know i think they're drafters tables aren't the way you can tip and tilt them may have a look at a drafters table or some sort of other means or see if there's any way that I can I don't know work off this this frame still and and attach something to the end so that I can fold the canvas back under itself I mean that should be fairly straightforward so you know uh, we'll see how we go I mean I will show some updates at some point and add them onto this upload so you can see how I how I get on. The only thing I'm a little bit annoyed about is that my uh, tea ruler didn't come. So I've ordered another one on Amazon. I've had notification to say that due to external factors it wasn't delivered yesterday, which is a bit frustrating because it's one of the things that many people who have uploaded these videos have actually said is that it, it would have been really good to be able to keep the straight you know the edges straight as you put the diamonds sort of on the edge so you know just to be able to hang that over the top of the work and sort of let the ruler hang down would have been ideal but obviously that's not to happen this time but yeah I've got one coming tomorrow anyway which hopefully will arrive and um, yeah we'll see how we go so thanks for watching and uh, I will catch up with you soon take care guys bye